Hey, hey, Lactation Nation, Seth here. In the not-so-distant future, man no longer fears the tyranny of a state, as sovereign nations have been abolished. For we found the best form of government. Anarcho-capitalism. Whenever anarcho-capitalism is mentioned to me in conversation, it's usually followed by repealing the age of consent. But in this case, it simply means everything and everyone in this entire solar system is corporate property. Quasimorph is an early access roguelike where you take the role of Magnum PMC, a private military contractor with flexible morality that does work for the highest bidder. The twist is, the world is over. Judgment Day is here, and we're all going to die. And we've chosen to profit from the chaos. But first, a word from our sponsor, because I gotta get that bread. Whoops, sorry guys, my PC crashed, again. I had a single Chrome tab open, so my computer caught fire, burned down my house, and killed my wife's son. Thankfully, today's video is sponsored by Opera GX. It's no small secret that modern web browsers are massive resource hogs. They always say, just upgrade your rig bro. But you know what? No, I'm using Opera's GX control feature to limit how much CPU and RAM the browser can use, so I can game uninterrupted no matter how many memory leaks you Elon adds to Twitter. Opera GX is extremely moddable. Check out this one that I made. I've heard your cries, your demands. More, Seth. We want more, Seth. Hey, hey, well, hey, now hey, you've got me with every hey, hey, single keystroke. Hey, 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 I'll be there stroking right alongside you. Oh, you don't like that? You just want the themed wallpaper? Opera GX once again has you covered. You can fully customize which features come from which mods. And with a plethora of excellent mods on the store page, your browser can be whatever you want it to be. Check this out. By tweaking the music, keyboard sounds, tab sounds, theme, wallpaper, and custom shader, I've created the ultimate web browsing experience. Ugh, music to my ears. Now, I know what you're thinking, Seth. This browser sounds pretty cool and all, but switching browsers is such a pain. Worry not. Opera GX has an import tool to quickly download all your settings, history, bookmarks, and passwords in just one click. Use my link to download Opera GX today and say goodbye to all those pesky, boring, other browsers. To answer the question, what is a quasimorph? Sometimes the most accurate answer is the schizophrenic one. The setting of quasimorph stems from the esoteric meta mythos of Daniil Andreev in his book Rose of a World, which describes Shadanakar, or the systems of parallel worlds connected to Earth. These concentric layers are Brumfaturas, the superimposition, influence, and overlap of which formulate together to create existence. At least I think so. A uh, quasimorph is an intruder stepping in from another reality. And unfortunately, the veil between worlds is weakest between your chest cavity. Quasimorph is a turn-based survival extraction shooter, or in other words, 2D escape from Tarkov except fun. The principle is very simple. We take out a contract and send in one of our agents. If they die, no problem. They're not really any more people than they are proprietary neuro imprints. We license their consciousness, and we bioprint as many replacements necessary for total client satisfaction. You're free to take jobs from any of the major corporations, including the Quasimorphs. We may be locked in an existential war for humanity, but that doesn't stop me from holding stock in Sectland. Rapture is coming, but homie, I got some great dividends. And you start with a favorable reputation. After all, you did help them entrench into this reality. You start a mission by selecting an active contract around the planet or moon you're currently orbiting. This requires you to select a mercenary, a class, and a loadout for the mission, after which you're deployed into hostile territory. Anyone you see, anything that moves, is kill on sight. An entire mission is two to four levels. If you change your mind midway and call the shuttle, fuel is expensive, so it's cheaper to let you die. The only way to extract is by completing the objective, which can be espionage, station defense, sabotage, elimination, or conquest. If you die anywhere in between, you lose everything. And I assure you, you're going to be dying a lot. If it's any consolation, uh, I died during the tutorial because I picked up a knife, selected amputate, and clicked on my head. Each deployment, you're on a timer. The more time you spend and the more blood you spill, the higher your level of quasimorphosis. Quasimorphosis measures the probability of ecolapse, where, upon death, the host explodes and a quasimorph phases in. The severity of a situation is described in the bottom right. Somnia, no events. Grasp, occasional ecolapse. Intrusion, music changes, ecolapse and aggression increase. Plenum, spontaneous ecolapse. Alteration, the entire floor is coming. Q-Morphos. Music changes to its highest intensity. Every host in the map explodes. And finally, 
rapture. If you want to live, you'll keep this number as low as possible. Naturally, there's only a few ways to do this. Drinking vodka, smoking Newports, and injecting morphine. Each time you move, you consume calories. At higher weights, this is 9 calories per step. This is what Americans really believe. And to avoid starvation, we need a steady supply of slop. But when the food runs out, I want you to consider alternative sources. When I consume my enemies, is it really cannibalism? For that implies, I considered them human to begin with. Unfortunately, human flesh will raise your quasi-morphosis. You delay one death and accelerate another. However, if you find a crafting bench in an empty tin, you can turn that long pig into gourmet dinner, which will no longer cause quasi-morphosis. The implication being that it's not about devouring your fellow man, it's about table manners. Disclaimer, they patched the canned meat. It's so over. On the other hand, they improved the crafting bench so much you have no idea. We are so back. In general, the crafting bench will save a lot of your early game runs. Uh, don't sleep on it. Improvise toilet grenades, clear rooms, makeshift batteries, power auto dock, and floor scanners. Completing a mission gives rewards, but more importantly, a reputation. You can land at any corporate asset so long as it's friendly and exchange goods for equipment. And if you're completely broke but friendly with Techland, you can even exchange yourself by amputating your own limbs. This is not a joke. It's a completely valid strategy to potato peel your digits, offer them at the Fever Temple, regenerate your limbs in the ship, and do it all over again. It's not efficient, but we can no longer exploit blood bag synthesis. They caught on to us, boys. It was good while it lasted. Speaking of which, the Magnum can fabricate almost everything, so long as you have the proprietary item chip. These are effectively a perpetual license, and are so incredibly valuable that finding one during a mission is a valid reason for evacuation. There's also class and mind chips, which unlock classes and mercenaries respectively. If you mouse over a chip and you see the words, data miner, You've officially hit the jackpot. You can do whatever you want, but remember, your actions have consequences. Supporting a corporation will accelerate their growth in technology. If you want top shelf gear, great. But if you turn against them in the future, you're not going to be facing wage slaves and general managers. You'll be facing rival PMCs and their own special forces. So I encourage you, pick a side, any side, and stick to it. There's a lot of minor corporations, but for the sake of time, here's the big players. SBN, Social Media Monopoly. They own Twitter, the best energy rifles, and the lightest armor. Realware, industrial mega manufacturer. Carnage Pattern is objectively the coolest armor, and they produce the highest RPM ballistics. Ancom, entertainment and research conglomerate. They make the most versatile armor, the best snipers, and the experimental HFC. This game's equivalent of Doom's BFG. Testlan, quasi-morphs from Venus that'll make you rage quit at least several times. Everything is Aztec, from the design to the desire for human organs. And finally, the Civil Resistance. These are terrorists that hope to bring about something even worse than Judgment Day. A return to national sovereignty. They intentionally hive mind themselves into a cluster of consciousness known as a call node. In effect, they have achieved working communism. Anyway, you understand the politics of our PMC, let's return to the actual mechanics. It's very tempting to finish the tutorial and go straight to the moon. Somehow, I avoided this so I didn't get filtered by a wheelchair. Quasimorphosis is unique to each planet because they're subject to the influence of a different Bramfatura. Venus, Ganyx. Mercury, Shartamacum. And the Earth's moon, Duger. Mars and its moons have absentia, which means there is no quasimorphosis. So, if you're starting off, I recommend Mars. If you're learning, try Mercury. Mercury and Venus, and if you know what you're doing, go to the moon. That doesn't mean any single location is safe, and death is around every corner. Most common cause of death? Flamethrowers. Not in the hands of enemies, but myself. An entire run, gone in a flash because some unpaid worker amputated your neck with a circular saw. I assumed the weapon was busted, so I tried it myself, in a straight line, where it ricocheted and cut my legs clean off. When you take damage, you get injuries, which have to be treated, or they get infected. And if there's no antibiotics on hand, well, it has to go. Secondly, the most common cause of getting filtered, pain shock. If you take too much damage too quickly, you get stunned and lose a turn. Both systems are universal. If you shoot something hard enough, they'll get stunned from the shock. If you cause injury, you can run away as they bleed to death. And if you amputate a critical organ, they might just die instantaneously. The number of action points you can take per turn is based on your move setting. At any time, you can switch between sneak, normal, and run. Sneak is one action point, but can detect the position of nearby enemies, use your inventory, 
and interact with nearby objects at no cost. Normal is two action points and run is free. However, while running, you can't open your inventory and take a severe penalty to your accuracy. Peak performance requires that you abuse the system. Opening a door, switch to sneak, see enemies, switch to normal, and toss a grenade before switching back and locking it on the same turn. A lot of players have a tendency to go autopilot in sneak mode and just die without explanation. What usually happens is they turn a sharp corner, get their shit blasted in, but because they have a single action point, they go into pain shock, which rolls over to the next turn, where they get shot again and repeat the process until they die. The whole point of running is to face check. Understand your tools and you'll find this to be a very satisfying tactical experience. I used to have complaints about this game, but after so many hours, I can tell you, if you die, it's a skill issue. I have a brain parasite, and it forces me to play this game at two times speed of cheat engine. That's a personal choice. I also use a macro to amputate every corpse. After 100 hours playtime, that's a necessity. Classes work like a perk system, and each mercenary has an intrinsic perk. This unique ability combines with your class of choice to create vastly different play styles. For example, Percy comes with plus five to all resistance. Outfitted with full carnage pattern, he's the only person in the game that can set himself on fire and not take damage. And after putting him in Phoenix Brigade, I can shoot a single round of incendiary ammunition and burn down half the map. In general, you should pick a mercenary that suits your playstyle. Do you want to feast on human flesh? Play Isabella, because she's immune to infection. Even better, put her as Eclipse Blaze and turn your cannibalism into a one-hit kill. Are you tired of getting stun-locked? Try Maximilian, because he doesn't feel pain. Would you like a slower pace? Play Mirza, because her caloric needs are 40% of everyone else. Are you tired of scraping by? Would you like to quadruple everyone's inventory, to the point where every enemy contains two flavors of ramen and a pack of lucky strikes? Play Tunnel Rats and experience the greatest whiplash in difficulty, as everything that doesn't die to your shotgun gets knocked back into the void of space. I've discussed builds, let's talk about guns, because there's a lot of them. If you want to kill enemies, you need to beat their resistance, and the type of damage you do is based on the ammunition. Flamethrowers and energy rifles cook organics, but have no effect on cyborgs. In contrast, the buckshot of a shotgun will cut them to pieces. Most armor stops the blunt impact of a 9mm, but a 797 from an assault rifle will pierce right through. Quasimorphic weapons deal cold. Even if you're fully equipped, the full burst of a serpent's mouth will send you straight back to the menu. And poison was previously neglected, and now it's a complete menace. Also, there's turrets. They're incredibly useful for defense missions, and because an enemy ran right up to your face, shooting you in the crossfire. And finally, you might be asking yourself, what's that little icon on the bottom right? Don't worry about it. Anyways, I forgot how to structure this video, so in conclusion, I give this game a self-inflicted out of 10. It's amazing. I know it's early access, but there's a lot of content already, and you can easily sink 80 hours on just the main gameplay loop. There's an impressive roadmap and features to come that I cannot disclose at this time because I promised I wouldn't tell. As always, more content to come next year because I gotta see my family. Merry Christmas! A warm thanks to the many members of the Merchants Guild generously funding and bankrolling these videos consistently for several years. You're all truly wonderful, and you give me more than I deserve. And you won't stop asking me to take your money, so I will. In exchange, enjoy the outro.
If you're interested, there's a 20% sale on GOG. A special thanks to the autistic Japanese man who tailored me this Mebeke suit. If you're interested in anything from a uh, Democratic Republic of Congo military suit to a BDSM outfit, I've linked his Patreon in the description below. By the way, in case you're wondering, what's the most expensive part of this suit? It's the snake skin. Have a merry 2024, and I'll see you all next year.